All right, hey everyone out there. This is Nurse Jessica and this is Real Nurse Talk. This week is super exciting. I'm doing my first interview with the lovely and amazing Sarah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. hello. Uh, Sarah and I went to nursing school together and we basically did best friends ever since. <laughs> So when I told her that I was starting a YouTube channel and I was going to do interviews, obviously I was like, you're going to be my first one because I'm really nervous. <laughs> okay. Let's get started. Go ahead and tell everyone a little bit about your background and why you decided to become a nurse and what kind of nurse you are. Um, so I started school and not pursuing nursing. I was going to go into ag biology because I had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> it's way different than nursing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I had always been interested in the medical field. I loved um, learning about how like the human body works and it always like was super fascinating to me through high school and even like the beginning of college. So as I learned more that I liked that more, then I decided to switch gears into nursing. So I did take a like a year longer in school than I probably should have because I was late to decide that. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I also really love working with people. So working around people, working with people and helping them get better, which nursing is all about. So, and I, um, in nursing school, I absolutely had no idea what area I wanted to pursue. It's hard to know because there's so many areas in nursing, which mm -hmm. is really cool. Um, but I didn't actually know until my very last semester of nursing school when I uh, went into the NICU for just like half a day and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and so then I pursued um, precepting there and got that and then I was lucky enough to get hired after graduating from college. So that's where I work currently. So. Awesome. So you started fresh out of nursing school in NICU. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about what it was that made that click for you that you really wanted to do NICU. Um, I just really like the patients. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> They're the then, cutest patients in the Sorry hospital. to interrupt, but just for people who don't know, NICU stands for? New Natal Intensive Care Unit. So that's the really little babies. Okay, go yes. ahead. Um, what was the question? <laughs> uh, the question was, what clicked for you that really made you want to do NICU? I enjoyed, like, working with the babies. I just felt like it, um was really fun for me and something that I got like a lot of um, joy from. Yeah. Um, and I also really like that for the most part, your, our patients like get better. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. like, it's a, to me it's a little bit more of a happier spin. Yes, like their start out is kind of rough and it's a little scary at the beginning and it's not always like butterflies and rainbows, but mm -hmm. I feel that it is a more positive environment and I really liked that part of the NICU. So. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Yeah. So, okay, question. What is the smallest baby that you've worked with personally? Oh, don't. <laughs> like, uh, like weight-wise? Or weight? both? Um, well, the NICU has had much smaller than I have personally worked with. The youngest I've like had to deliver it was a 26-weeker and they are oh Tiny, tiny, yeah. Yeah, so you're just, you could go like this. Yes, that's so crazy. So, okay, let's, real quick, let's compare stethoscopes. Okay. Okay. So this is my adult stethoscope, because I work with adults. Okay, and put it up. And oh this my is the NICU. god! <laughs> so if that kind of melts your heart, maybe NICU is something for you. <laughs> so let's talk about... What do you think are some attributes that a NICU nurse needs to have if someone out there is like, I don't know if this is for me? Um, I think what's so different about NICU and really um, Women's Services Department in general is that it's, we're our own world, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, we don't depend on the help of anyone outside of our unit. So we're really close knit, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so if like there's a code, it's us. It's we're not mm -hmm. calling it overhead. We're not getting assistance from anyone else. It's all on us. So I think that's 
something that's different about our unit. It just feels like we're our own little world within the hospital. Yeah. Um, which is cool. Um, so you have to have the ability to like slow down and like work with the patients that first, for example, have a hard time eating. Like that takes a lot of patients to be able to like, slow down and do that. And then you have to like flip the switch and be ready for like a very fast paced bad delivery. So I think it's kind of like you have both ends of the spectrum of both like fast paced emergency and like the ability to have like a really patient that means a lot of patients. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so that's kind of a cool thing about NICU, I think, because you're working at the bedside, but then you're sort of in like an OR nurse too, because you have to go to all the C-sections, right? Yeah. So, Not every um, hospital works that way. Okay. Um, our hospital, we go to every C-section, whether it's mm -hmm. uh, high risk or just a regular scheduled c-section mm -hmm. um some hospitals the allen d nurses will back up their own c-sections if it's just a regular no risk like a healthy yeah. kind of c-section yeah okay so it's different in every place so what does i know it's hard to talk about a typical day as a nurse because you never really know what you're gonna get but do your best to say what kind of a typical day might look like for you so um, it depends on like how busy we are. I feel like we're up and down quite a bit. So um, we might have times where we're like super slammed and you're just like chaotic all day. And then the Thursdays are a lot slower. Um, I would say like in between day would be um, go in, get report right away. Then you check your orders. Um, if you have three patients, which is our max, mm -hmm. um, if they're all if they're not like super high acuity, um, you would start the touch times. We typically do our touch times or our assessments, if you will, um, every three hours. That's where we assess them, feed them, all that good stuff. And if you have three patients and you're bottle feeding all of them, which we don't, we like to really um, um, push our patients to do breastfeeding. We really try and promote mm -hmm. that because it's what's best. But even if they're breastfeeding, you have to help with that. So mm -hmm. it does take quite a bit of time if you have three patients and you're yeah. trying to do all of that. Um, and then the next thing would be um, when the doctors come in to give report and kind of come up with a new care plan for that patient, which sometimes will put you in a spin of like, oh, I have to do this x-ray, I have to do this test, I have to do this lab. And then you go right back into your touch times, which is what we call them. Um, other hospitals will probably call them different things. So touch times is when you're interacting with the baby yes. for feeding or for assessments. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then if we have a C-section, we fit it in wherever. <laughs> yeah. We would like try and work around the C-section. So. Yeah. yeah. So let's maybe to the parents out there who have a baby in the NICU right now, or maybe you're a high-risk pregnancy and you're not sure if you're going to be in the NICU, how involved can the parents be? How often can they be there? That kind of thing. Um, it's their baby, so they can come anytime they want. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no restrictions on um, our, this is speaking from the hospital I work at, there is no restrictions on visiting hours. We do restrict how many can be at the bedside because it can be too much if you have yeah. a big family. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do things like um, family hours. So like everyone within that immediate family, like the siblings and the both parents can mm -hmm. be at the bedside even if it's big, a uh, larger group than what we typically allow. Um, so we encourage our parents to be as involved as they can be even if the patient is um can't be held or can't be fed or things mm -hmm. like that just like having them there i think is yeah. it affects the baby more than we probably realize um even um doing something like skin to skin if you can't hold your uh can't feed your baby even during that like hour of skin to skin right after birth is really important mm -hmm. um and then we of course when they can feed we encourage the parents to feed them as often as they can. And then skin to skin is just when the baby's naked skin is touching your bare skin as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about, would you say then that the more involved the parents are, the better outcomes you tend to see for the baby? 
because I think sometimes people are scared to to touch them because they're so small mm-hmm. and they're connected to all these machines yeah. that they don't understand. You know. Yes. Everyone's definitely scared, <laughs> even if it's like very basic monitors that they have on it they're always afraid to touch your baby which if you are outside like outside of the medical field that anything on your baby seems mm-hmm. scary so um i understand that part but i definitely encourage the parents to be too interact and to hold because um there has been studies that like doing the skin to skin really improves their outcomes um if you think about it they were inside your tummy for so long, like their whole life, and <laughs> like they're used to hearing heartbeats and feeling mm-hmm. not feeling alone, and then all of a sudden there's like weird noises, people are poking them, like it's just I think mm-hmm. that they really need that connection, um, yeah, that um, isn't really provided in the NICU other than with their parents, so. yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, do you have any tips for nurses who might be new to the NICU and are feeling really overwhelmed and don't want to make mistakes and all the things that we want to do when we're new nurses? Um, That's hard. (laughs) Because it's, I think uh, we put more pressure on it when it's a baby. Because yeah. everyone, like, wants the best thing for the newborn child. Like, so I think we put more pressure on ourselves to not make mistakes and to be perfect and mm-hmm. all these things. And coming out as, like, a brand new nurse and to be thrown into this, you're like, it's very overwhelming. Yeah. Um, I just think that my best advice would be to, when you're orienting especially, is to go to as many bad deliveries and try as many things when you have the guidance of someone like watching over you. Mm-hmm. Um, just because if you are take this step back and you're too scared in that moment, it's going to be a much worse when you're by yourself yeah. as a nurse on your own. Um, but something that is encouraging to know is that like I never feel completely by myself, even though I'm... Um, functioning as a nurse on my own right now like yeah I feel like if I'm at a delivery that I'm not super comfortable with my situation I can always call the nurse Mm -hmm. in the NICU and they'll come um I can call and ask the neonatologist like I just feel like I have a really good team yeah with me and I think that's really important and I always feel like I can ask a question even if it's a question that I feel like I should already know the answer to yeah so I think it's important to have like a really good support system in your uh, unit yes. because if you feel you can't ask a question, that's a very dangerous place to be. Eh? So. Yeah, and that's that's always something to look for when you're maybe deciding what hospital you want to go to. You're mm-hmm. going to your clinicals. Clinicals are awesome because you can kind of get an idea of what certain hospitals are like, what the environment is like. And you don't want to be somewhere, maybe you've heard that phrase that nurses eat their young. You don't want to be somewhere like mm-hmm. that because that it is dangerous because you don't want to feel stupid for asking questions. You should be encouraged to ask questions. Yeah. And how long did you orient for? Oh, we had three months, yeah. So you get three months where you're with someone that's guiding you every step of the way. Mm-hmm. So try not to be scared and develop a good relationship with them. And then know, yeah, when you're done, it's not like you don't have people around you that you can ask questions. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about your favorite thing and then your least favorite thing about NICU. So let's start with your favorite. Um, my favorite thing is um, when you've had a patient, especially for a long time, and then they finally get to go home. Like, I think that's really cool. Yeah. And what's even cooler is when you see them outside the hospital and like they're three months old and they're chunky and half healthy and laughing and you're like, oh my gosh, like I, you just like remember the first time like they were born and how like that state compared to where they are now. It's really cool. Yeah. That sounds so rewarding. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Least favorite. Least favorite. Uh, it could be anything. It could be charting. It could be... I don't know. Doing IVs. It could be anything. Uh, Least favorite thing. That's hard. I mean, because I don't want to sound like I'm being... (laughs) Well, and you know, part of why I wanted to do this was to bring some realism to nursing so people know that 
it not, it's not mm-hmm. great all the time, mm-hmm. but it's it's this is supposed to help you cope with the bad and to find out what kind of bad isn't so bad for you. You know what I mean? Least um, I don't know if it's like my absolute least favorite, but something that bothers me is when there's disconnect in communication between like other units, like L and D. Um, mm-hmm. For example, if we have to go to a lot of different things for them and if they aren't considerate about where we are for example um there was one situation that we were pretty busy it was me and two other nurses um we actually had to call in that third nurse because we were slammed i had just gotten a baby from a vaginal delivery i was admitting her and then they called back for a section of a 30-weeker, which is really young. Like mm-hmm. that, uh, we usually send two people, if usually if we can, to those um, kinds of deliveries because there's so much that is happening fast. We like really like to help each other in those. Um, and it wasn't an emergency. They didn't have to schedule it right once I got my... They knew I just got an admission. Yeah. And they already were calling us back for that 30 weeker, which needs a lot of setup. Like you yeah. can't just go to that delivery. You have to have a lot of things ready to go. And things like that where there's like a miscommunication, like you should have they should have been a little more considerate with our unit and like us yeah. just getting admission and then having to go to this mm-hmm. high risk delivery. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. things like that. Um, because we work so closely with those units. So yeah. I think yeah. That is just something that I would have liked to do yeah, differently. Definitely. And I think sometimes it's really hard to have insight into other units because sometimes you get so wrapped up in your own. But that's why this is good, too, because mm-hmm. you're, you're kind of getting a chance to explain where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that person didn't realize that maybe people can be more aware now. Yeah. And if it was an emergency, there's nothing yeah, you can do about course. that. Uh-huh. But it wasn't an emergency, so. Okay. I gotcha. <laughs> okay, so let's kind of start wrapping it up. So I want to do, if there is a story that you have about a patient that is meaningful, has been meaningful to your life in some way, if you can share that. Um, I think, actually, it goes off the story I just told you. Um, this 30 week, <laughs> oh, she stayed with us for a while and we got really close to her family and it, um, we actually will meet up for lunch every once in a while with her mom and the baby and it's really cool to like have that deep of a connection with them and yes. see her grow and it's just really awesome like that really makes me fills my heart when it comes to nursing yeah yeah I love it I love getting to hear different nurses stories about units that I personally don't have experience in and I hope that maybe someone out there this has clicked for you and you might decide that you want to be a NICU nurse because we want happy nurses we don't want burnout sad nurses and I think Mm -hmm. it's obvious that you really care about what you do and and it just seems like you have passion for your patients and their families and I just thank you for (laughs) doing this interview with me is there anything else you want to add Feel good? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Me too. Uh, so again, this is Real Nurse Talk. I appreciate you listening to this interview. If this is something that you liked and you want to see more of, comment below. If you have additional questions about NICU, I could probably shoot Sarah a text and maybe I can answer your comment. Um, but like us and ring the bell so that you get notifications. I do videos every Saturday. And if you have any suggestions for different uh, nursing specialties you would like to see interviewed, just let me know. So that's it today, guys, and have a healthy week. Bye!